Hey guys, Kate Sparks here again. <laughs> I always sound so cautious when I start these videos. Like, I'm not really sure that anybody's listening or watching, but I kind of want to talk to you anyway. One of these days I'm really gonna nail the intro and be like, Hey guys, Kate Sparks here! Today is not that day, and this is not that video. Um, I'm gonna answer a reader question. I don't know who asked this question. Um, it's actually, it's a question that I get a lot though. So hopefully this will be useful to more than one person. Uh, the question is, what made you decide to self-publish versus sending into a publishing company? And what are the pros and cons? I actually answered this in a blog post. Um, so that's the best place to get my full answer to the question. It's a longer post. If you go to my blog, which is disregardtheprologue.com, that's prologue with a G-U-E at the end. If you spell it with just a G, we can still be friends, but I'm gonna kind of judge you a little bit. And then you wanna click on the About Me tab at the top and click on the post that says Publishing FAQ and that will take you there. I will also link that down below if I remember to do that. But for the purposes of this video, I will answer the portion of the reader question that was about pros and cons because I didn't actually phrase it that way in the blog post. Okay, uh, the first pro for me for self-publishing is the creative control. As my friend, uh, the author Krista Walsh put it, I'm a control freak. She is, I am, a lot of self-published authors are. I like to be able to say which stories are going to get published. Um, not every project that I start ends up being publishable or even something that I really want to finish, but I like that that decision comes down to me. Okay, uh, next pro that I have written down here, um, being able to choose my own editors and cover artists. This is really, really important to me. I want editors who are going to do content editing, who are going to rip my story apart, basically take it right down to the studs if they have to, break it down to the foundations, Whatever building analogy you feel like using, I don't do a lot of home renovation, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't want somebody who's just going to take one quick run at it with a red pen and make grammar corrections. Maybe that's what you're looking for, and if it is, uh, then self-publishing allows you to just hire somebody who's going to do that. In my case, I want all of the edits, I want everything possible, I want... Uh, I want every book that I write to end up being an education for me as a writer as I learn from editors how to be better at my job. And yes, I do pay for that and we will come back to that later in the cons. And same thing goes for cover art. The thing with book covers is that a good cover can sell a bad book, which is not necessarily a good thing for readers. A bad cover can keep the best book from ever being discovered. So I wanted to make sure that my covers were the best possible ones. And I've got books one and two of the Bound Trilogy here. Um, Sworn is on the shelf behind me there. It's also gorgeous. Um, but you can see, these are, they're nice book covers. I love them. I, I really love this one. So yeah, choosing my own cover artist was a huge pro for me. I wanted to know that my book wasn't going to get screwed over by somebody picking the wrong cover or creating a bad cover. The next one, oh, this is getting long again. The money. Uh, it's not a thing that I really like to talk about, um, but um, money is an issue. With self-publishing, you're keeping up to 70% of the proceeds from ebooks, significantly less from paperback, obviously, because there are actual production costs for printing and so and shipping and so forth. Uh, when I was looking at it, it seemed like I had a better chance of actually making a decent income by selling self-published books rather than taking a chance on traditional publishing and maybe getting the big contract, but it seemed more likely to me that I would get either a small advance or no advance and um, have the publisher not put a lot of money into promoting the book and end up not making a lot of money. Now obviously this all depends on exactly how many books you sell. It's kind of a gamble either way. But I I do personally put that pretty firmly in the pro category for self-publishing. 
for most of us, you're mostly selling ebooks and you're keeping a really good chunk of the profits from that. Um, financially, I would say that I have definitely done better self publishing than I would have had I gone through a traditional publisher as a debut author. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, and to continue with that, um, the other pro that I have written down is that I get to set my ebook prices. As a reader, ebook prices are kind of a big issue for me. I don't think they should cost as much as a paperback. Um, for me, the most I'll pay for an ebook is about $6 USD, uh, which is a little bit more Canadian. Because I won't pay more than about $6 US for an ebook, I would have felt really bad asking people to spend more than that to buy mine. With self-publishing, I am able to keep my ebook prices lower. Regular price for my three larger books is $4.99 US, um, but I frequently have them on sale for less. I think right now Bound is $2.99, so that was a great thing for me too. And being able to set my prices again, it means if I want to do a price promotion, then I can do that and I don't have to ask anybody's permission. So that's a good thing too. Now, this does not mean that everything with self-publishing is bouquets of flowers and bouquets of kittens and fruit bouquets and other lovely, I don't know why all good things are bouquets today, but that's just kind of how it is in my head right now. Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily all wonderful. Uh, there are definitely cons. The biggest one, I think, for me and the first one that I wrote down here is the stigma. You know, people think that your book wasn't good enough to get picked up by a publisher, when in fact, maybe self-publishing was your first choice, like it was mine. That's just something you gotta deal with. The other part of that is, uh, <laughs> you know, you'll meet somebody for the first time, and they say, what do you do? And you say, oh, I'm a writer. And they say, oh, do you have any books published? And you say, yes. And they say, oh, who's your publisher? And you go, I am. And they go, oh. And that just gets really awkward because they're not really sure what to say to that. I'm finding even in the couple of years since I published my first book, this has become less of a problem. People generally seem to be more aware that this is a thing that's happening and that people are doing professionally, but it's something to be aware of. The upfront cost. The upfront cost is a big thing for a lot of people, and understandably so. When I was working on Bound and I finally had it at a place where I felt like it was ready for professional editing, I didn't have an extra few thousand dollars to spend on that, um, you know, to get the level of editing that I wanted from the editor that I wanted. It happened to be tax time. My husband was getting a refund, and I basically had to ask him to invest all of that in a personal project that probably was not going to get paid back. The fact is that most books don't sell that well. Um, I think I read somewhere that the average is that they sell like 300 copies and I had to sell, I think I had to sell something like 1,500 or 2,000 copies to recoup all of my costs and I, so I knew that wasn't likely to happen. Um, so yeah, upfront costs uh, between editing and cover art can be a huge deal. And that's part of why publishers keep more of the money, because they are covering more of those costs. One way or another, somebody's paying for it, unless you're not getting professional editing or not using professional cover artists. That's a whole other deal. That's not my experience, so I'm not going to talk about that. Obviously, it worked out for me, so I'm happy with it. Um, other people who've had different experiences might feel a bit more strongly about this particular con. Uh, another one. Okay. Marketing. I'm going to call this a perceived con for self-publishing. You do have to do all of your own marketing. Obviously, you're the only one with skin in this game unless you have family or friends or someone who's invested in production of your book. Other people might help you. Um, I am so, so lucky to have readers who are willing to help spread the word about my books and recommend them to people after they've enjoyed them. But the fact is, marketing is your responsibility. It's your book. It's your business. Uh, you own your own publishing company now and you are doing all of your own marketing and promotion and sales and advertising, whatever you want to call all of this stuff. That's on you. It's kind of a big scary thing and as we discussed in a previous video, I'm not good at it. 
The reason I call this a perceived con for self-publishing is because even if you have a publisher, they're not necessarily doing a whole lot of this work for you. Um, most of the authors that I see, except for the big ones who are getting sent on the book tours and having the big ads and the promotion and all this kind of stuff, generally what I see from mid-list authors and new authors and all this is that they're doing most of their own promotion anyway. Um, whether they're doing paid marketing or whether it's mostly through social media, most of the book marketing I see is being done by authors. So I think this one is a little bit of a con no matter how you go, unless you're really, really super lucky. The last con that I wanted to mention really quickly was distribution. Ebook distribution is easy as pie. Uh, you can find the Bound Trilogy and Into Illurian, any of my books, um, you can find them uh, in the Kindle store, you can find them for Kobo and iBooks and Nook and uh, a couple of the subscription services and some other smaller ebook retailers. It's really easy to get in there, so that's not a problem at all. Um, when I say distribution is a con, I really am talking about paperbacks. Uh, it was a lifelong dream of mine to walk into a bookstore and see my books on the shelf. It's kind of hard for most self-published authors to get bookstore placement, even with excellent books, even with beautiful books. There are various reasons for that. Um, a lot of it boils down to just not having connections, uh, not knowing people in purchasing departments for stores. Even a traditional deal doesn't necessarily mean that your book is going to be on bookstore shelves or that it's going to get end cap placement or this is another one of those marketing kind of things. But the fact is that it's easier for a traditionally published book to at least have a chance to get in there. So that's kind of a thing. I decided in the end that making more money off of lower priced ebooks made more sense for me from a career perspective, from a financial perspective, than going with a traditional publisher, um, probably making less money, uh, selling fewer ebooks at a higher price, and maybe possibly getting a chance at having my books in bookstores. Personal decision. It's not the same decision that everybody's going to make. Again, depends on your priorities. If you really feel like you can't introduce yourself as a writer until you have a traditional contract, that's your thing. Go for the traditional contract. Um, do what you got to do. Um, but the question was why I chose self-publishing, and this extremely long video has kind of answered that question. Um, again, for more details on why I chose self-publishing rather than just the pros and cons, definitely check out that blog post. Thank you to all of the people who asked that question, and in particular to the person whose question I actually read out there. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribing, please go ahead and do that. Uh, give this video a like if it was helpful for you or interesting for you. Or if you like kitten bouquets, give the video a like. Um, keep commenting with your questions and anything you're curious about. I will see you guys soon. Bye.